Oh. All right. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Let's party. Everybody loves a shiny suit. There's more to it than simply looking cute. If you're selling cars or houses, put on your fancy trousers. They give a man an air of high repute. Everybody loves your informal dress. A quick way of oblizing your noblesse. Reese Mock to Pretty Patel, they always dress so well. Just who they are inside, you never guess. When you look at Jeremy Corbyn, he doesn't look much cop. If he wants us all to listen, then he'd better change his top. His clothes look like they came from round the back of an Oxfam shop. When everybody loves a shiny suit. Now listen, everybody loves a shiny suit. It makes you look all proper, ain't that the truth? You might think it's dressy, but your blonde hair can stay messy just as long as you're wearing a whistle and a flute. Now you might be a bother boy who's not above a threat of violence to journalists or doubling the national debt. As long as you're dressed sharpish, there's nothing to regret. Cos everybody loves a shiny suit. From criminal suspects in the dock avoiding lengthy sentences. From bankers working at Northern Rock to all the new apprentices. A suit provides the cover for every deficiency. Except for football pundits when they're talking on TV. Cos everybody loves a shiny suit. And we will all stand there and that salute. When we finally confuse sartorial with deeply dictatorial And the Nazis parade in polished hats and boots Cos they're all dressed up in the shiny You voted for this, don't be whiny Dressed up in the shiny suits There was I, digging a hole Two metres wide it was and it was me and Terry Now what was we supposed to do? Foreman said, keep your social distance, but the whole measure two by two. Well, Terry must be having a laugh, trying to protect himself with a scoff. I said, we're stuck in a hole, can't live off the dole. I don't know why we're risking life and limb to build a building nobody can occupy. Well, Terry turns to me. Says Bernie, mate, I must admit, I'm feeling peaky and I think I'm coming down. Off goes he, goes up to his family on the tube across the town. And the foreman says to me, keep popping up the false economy. Cause we're stuck in a hole, everyone's on the dole And that's why you're risking life and limb to build a building Nobody can occupy Then the foreman, well, he scratches his noggin there And he suddenly says, he says, this is madness, he says All these people being forced to act like there isn't a global pandemic happening Go home to your families and just pray you haven't already caught anything, he says Well, me and Terry didn't need telling twice We'll get out of here Oh, one thing's clear oh, We should be at home all tucked up safe and sound With our own precious family And we was overjoyed Cos I'm really quite keen to be in quarantine Rather than be employed That's what we said to the foreman He said, you know the rules, two metres Me and Terry stuck down that hole
Thank you very much. How nice, how nice, how nice. Thanks very much. Let's get on with it. Uh, good morning. How are you? Here we are, hump day, Wednesday. Uh, it's lovely to be here. And uh, the format seems to be working. The whole live streaming thing. You know, we're getting there. And what I'm pleased about is that uh, on a technical level, today is much easier. Uh, there's no guests. There's no, I don't have to worry about any of that. It's just an old school podcast, effectively. And that's quite a relief, I've got to say. Um, we've had some great reaction. Uh, good morning, everybody watching live on YouTube. Uh, good morning, Emily, Steph, Una, Jem, Martin. Uh, morning. Uh, great reaction to Britain Awake with John Holmes yesterday. Uh, in fact, uh, w w someone took the trouble to call in with a little bit of reaction uh, to that. Yeah. Hi, Jake. It's Gary Krill here. Hi, Gary. I ring it up vis a vis John's reference to Jason and the Argonauts right. in 1963. Sure. And now Mr. Harry Housen animated, amongst others, The Hydra. Now, I've seen this on Pirates of the Caribbean ride, and if they can make Johnny Depp look like a lovable rogue, then surely they can make Cecil Rhodes apologise for his colonial exploits. I've also heard that the Cornish are fed up with people stereotyping them and become extremely anti-pasty. Nice. Back to you in the studio. Thanks very much, Neil. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Neil. And goodbye. I think that's it. Um, we always welcome your reaction. Uh, you can leave a voicemail now. Uh, particularly, you know, if there's any kind of like, you know, because you, we know what's getting traction now on on the platforms. You know, the YouTubes and and the, all the all the broadcast media is 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 the quite strong rhetoric. You know, the anti masking and the the quite hardcore. You know, it's not racist to say blah blah blah. Um, give it a go. Why not? Oh uh, seven eight six two oh three two six five four. You can leave a voice mail just like that caller did. Oh seven eight six two oh three two six five four on the WhatsApp, if you please. Uh, that would be that would be really brilliant. Um, Neil sent a link to uh, the first ever retrospective of Bob Dylan's visual art. Uh, it's coming to the United States in the autumn. Uh, and what a treat that is. Um, that's one of those uh, sort of celebrity contrivances. Absolutely no artistic merit to it whatsoever. I mean, it's a matter of opinion, but I mean, it, you know, I think the thing about it is it's just mediocre, isn't it? it if it was so bad, it was good. That, there might be some sort of pleasure in that, um, but there there really isn't. And I don't know if you also saw that uh, Fern Cotton has released a her her own line of wallpapers, um, including some sketches of people doing yoga, like yoga poses. Um, I'll say that I feel like the yoga one, which she says I did it with a watercolor pen. Stylistically, that one's plausibly fern cottons. What I will say is that uh, watercolour pen is not her medium if you were to look at all the other designs, which display quite a high level of um, 
artistic competence. You, I, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, what, I'm just. Uh, anyway, you'll be delighted to know that uh, there's more stuff out there. I found a, a great website called Blisters, and uh, well, here's some of their stuff. Blisters high-end, fresh out the shipping container boutique is delighted to present a series of British-inspired, British-ordered tatware to pollute your home for approximately three years before becoming landfill. Presenting the Fag Packet Collection, a series of celebrity faintly sketched out ideas from the back of fag packets that you will ascribe an artificial sense of value to because the purported originator is on telly. It's Curtains for You by Ready Wit, Lively Raconteur and Tesco Chanteur Alexander Armstrong. This stunning range of curtains and blinds features all of his favourite things, as doodled on the back of a crumpled packet of Super Kings in a club in St James. Designs feature a bad drawing of Giles Corrin, a picture of a wheelbarrow full of money, and a touching self-portrait of Xander emptying a barrel into a hapless moorland grouse, something he's been very vocal about enjoying as an ambassador for the Countryside Alliance. Holly Willoughby's facial masks features a stunning range of gorgeous designs for which a professional designer was paid 200 quid as a buyout, while Holly has negotiated a perpetual royalty of 15% on retail price. The designs are a professional interpretation of a drawing of what transpired to be a daffodil as scrawled hastily on the back of a pack of Rothmans in between photo shoots for some shoes and some dresses. And finally, the David Walliam Simply Me collection. We asked David what kind of contrived, mildly toxic garbage he'd like to staple his name to next, and what we got was a perfunctory picture of a stick man with an arrow pointing at it and the word me written on it, to which end several shipping containers of dolls of David are currently making their way to Tilbury Docks from Guangdong province in China, where their production has devastated much of the local aquatic life. Blisters, tat from Bee Listers, only available everywhere you look. Wonderful. It's good to know they're uh, managing to, to uh, look after the pennies there. Um, I, I found this, and I, it's annoying because I had it all queued up, and now it's reset itself. I don't know why it's done that. So it's going to be a little bit messy, this, uh, while I try and find the right bit. Um, but this is from uh, when um, Zander was promoting his Christmas album, um, uh, where he's answering any question. And I, I, I really like uh, this question. This one comes from Margot Milne. Margot, hello. How hello, hello. Um, yes, yes, uh, yes. If you could only do one of acting, presenting and music, which would you do? Um, sort your levels out. A really tough Sander. choice to make, but strangely, I think I would, I would probably choose Pointless over and above ev everything else. Because, because it's easy money. Because it's easy money. And you I don't have to think. I really do love making Pointless. Because it's, it's easy. It's fun to do. And easy. Uh, and you c there's quite a lot of comedy in Pointless. And Is if it? I weren't doing any other acting, I could I could probably put some acting into Pointless. You really? Know, how you could just smuggle it in. And, you know, probably even smuggle some singing in. Wow. We have done in the past. In yes, fact. you have. Um, so, yes, I think probably presenting. Yeah, I think probably, Zander, because it really is money for old rope the way you do it. Um, uh, Barney says, uh, for so bad art, try Pierce Brosnan's oil paintings. I will try to find a link. Yes. Also, was it Ronnie Wood uh, in the Rolling Stones? Uh, he did amazing sort of Woolworths style, uh, sort of airbrushed, uh, you know, kind of like uh, composite pictures, you know, with sort of, and it's all just him with guitars and it was all very... Uh, it's good stuff, that. Martin says, I fitted a Dido rail in the drawing room. <laughs> oh, Dido, I wonder what Dido's doing right now. Um, and uh, Una says, uh, and yet you can imagine Fern Cotton's massive tantrum if William Morris tried to play easy listening tunes and chat about nothing, the injustice. <laughs> it's very good. Emily says, pointless is hilarious. Yes, it is. Richard Osman is hilarious. Um, so there you go. Uh, I just wanted to sh share that with you. Uh, don't forget, you can always send us a voice message. Have I mentioned that before? You can WhatsApp JK on 07862-032-654. How do you, Jake and the Apostles? Having just been informed this morning that I have to self-isolate for five days, even though I've had both vaccinations and um, uh, fully PPE'd whenever in public. Um, yeah, I, I was just wondering if uh, anybody can maybe think of any hobbies I can take up or 
anything I can do from inside the house without having to get anything from outside the house, inside the house, if you know what I mean. E.g., I don't have a piano, so I can't learn how to play the piano. Oh, Over but you, you could. But you could. Uh, that's Pablo. Thanks very much. If anyone's got any suggestions for Pablo, uh, do let us know. It's not today at swanburst.com. If you want to email, that's not today at swanburst.com. Or uh, it's at not today pod on Twitter. Um, if you've got a suggestion for what Pablo could do, I would argue if you've got a piece of paper or even, you know, uh, an arm, you could always draw the piano keys on and sing the, the notes as they come. I'm just saying. Hey, we've had another one from uh, trusted supplier, Jem. Uh, hi, Jake. Um, further to your tap from B-listers feature, my uh, my antiques dealer has, uh, has been on the line and wondering whether you'd be interested in an uh, origami swan folded by Top Gear's William Woolard. <laughs> Are you actually serious, though? I, I, I'm prepared to believe almost anything there. Um, anyway, if you've got a suggestion for what Pablo could do, uh, that'd be great. And speaking of antiques, I've started watching uh, the, the Antiques Road Trip um, in the mornings on BBC Two. Really getting into it. Is that about my age? I think it might be. Or is it about the Israel-Palestine conflict? I can't I can't fully tell. Um, but yes, it's, it's really important that with that whole conflict that we focus on how it affects me, isn't it? <laughs> Neil says, uh, Pablo, why don't you try upstairs bedroom fly fishing? I'm not sure what that, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, Jane says, can you create something out of bodily fluff? Time to start collecting. I saw someone collect it once in a jar. It's kind of horrendous. Um, and Jane says, uh, my dad's a big fan of bangers and cash. It's quite good if you're into old motors. There you go. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. Send your suggestions. 07862032654. Particularly, you know, if there's a demonstration uh, of something that you'd like to share. Uh, but anyway, it's Wednesday, and that means we're 24 hours away, uh, well, just under, um, from launching the inaugural uh, musical made uh, collectively. Although, I mean, I'm not being funny, but I'm I'm doing the majority of the legwork on it. Um, but it, but taking your suggestions, God, it's a bit like uh, whose line is it anyway? That John Sessions. Could I have a profession, please? Butcher. Butcher. Thank you very much. And could I have a household object, please? Toilet. A toilet. Okay. <clears throat> oh, what's this toilet doing in my butcher shop? And scene. Thank you very much. Oh, improv. Uh, anyway, um, I've, <laughs> I've had some ideas. So Julie yesterday suggested something like a sort of a... She likes Oklahoma and was thinking a kind of a, a thing about London with the sort of the easing of lockdown. Could there be a kind of, hey... Uh, it's London, maybe in the sort of uh, who will buy kind of kind of thing. And I do love me a 1960s British musical, particularly the choreography. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely hoping to work some of that in. Um, and uh, I quite like that sort of market, that sort of slowly populating marketplace idea. Uh, and I think I think there's a lot of fun to be had out of that. So I'm going to do that. And I was thinking about that, the sort of the, 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 the easing of lockdown. But then uh, this wild card came. I'm sorry, I'm smacking my lips. The burn is healing, which is great news. Um, I got an email from Pat yesterday who said, following on from Julie's idea of an old London setting. How about the super creepy and strange story of spring healed Jack? as a possible subject of those cobbled, fog-bound streets. Uh, I mean, love a duck, call blimey, mind me jelly deals. That's the other thing is I get to do my 1960s Cockney, which I do enjoy. Um, Spring Hill Jack. Uh, so I looked into that. Never heard of it before. Absolutely mad story. Uh, do you know about Spring Hill Jack? So it's a sort of folklore, urban myth thing from the Victorian era. Uh, the first claimed sighting was in 1837. Um, and it did spread across London, but also the Midlands and Scotland a bit. But it sort of became a bit of a bogeyman thing. Um, apparently, he could do these extraordinary leaps. He could leap nine feet into the air. Uh, and he would leap from coaches and stuff. And he didn't he didn't really do anything. Um, I mean, he sort of he accosted people, but he didn't he didn't really do anything. Um, and g gave lots of uh, sort of housemaids and things the vapors, but, but but didn't actually 
Um, it wasn't like too bad or anything. His appearance uh, apparently was pretty terrifying. He had clawed hands. Some people said that, that he had like metal gloves uh, and eyes that resembled red balls of fire. Um, one report claimed that beneath a black coat he wore a helmet and a tight-fitting white garment like an oil skin. And people said he looked like the devil. He was tall and thin with the appearance of a gentleman. And several reports, several reports, mentioned that he could breathe out blue and white flames. He's a whiz for getting a barbecue started. Uh, yeah, with sharp metallic claws at his fingertips. Um, and at least two people said he was able to speak comprehensible English. Uh, th I had a little look on YouTube, but uh, to be honest, the videos I watched literally made me fall asleep. Um, there's a sort of consensus that the police didn't take it very seriously at the time. But uh, but an another video said, yes, they did. They put on, uh, they had more uh, people on, on duty, uh, on patrol. So, um, uh, anyway, I think, I think I can work that in. So we might start in sort of present day London, but then we'll sort of time warp back. I'm not doing time warp. I hate that song. I really hate, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm sorry. Are you? Just can't get on with it. Um, then we're going to go back in time to Spring Heel Jack, and then we'll sort of come forward to the end of the horror, um, but some nice suggestions uh, from some of them. Uh, Jane says, Kern City yourself. Vaccine. That's good. Una says, Surrey with a cringe on top. <laughs> Darren simply says, Oh, I'm going up west with me jelly deals. And Martin says, Please, sir, can I have some more AstraZeneca? Um, Martin also says, Spring Hill Jack was no phantom raspberry blower of old London town. Uh, JVT superstar jabbing us with AstraZeneca. These are very good. Well done. Uh, but I, you know, I can't for copyright reasons. I can't do those. I've got to do something new. Um, Gem says so. There's an opportunity for a version of Goodness Gracious Red Balls of Fire, or is that a bit too niche? Um, and Alex says I had a Springheel Jack monster in my pocket toy, but I think he was only worth five points. Yeah, I mean, he he wasn't that monstrous. He was just the sort of thing. And uh, Jane agrees. Rocky Horror is awful. It is awful, isn't it? It just feels a bit contrived. Is that? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and Martin says, the All Rather Mysterious podcast comprehensively solved the mystery of Spring Hill Jack. Right. I'm going to go and listen to that today. Thank you for that. That's a top tip. Uh, Barney says, you know, I don't like uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show either. The sitcom Spaced has a nice line about all students pretending to love it. Aha! I, I missed Space. There's a black I have a cultural black hole from 2002 to 2004. I was in the States and YouTube hadn't really been invented. Um, and so I, um, I didn't really, I, I didn't see Space. I didn't see black books. Um, I didn't really see the IT crowd. I, like, I missed a whole sort of thing that everybody references. So... Um, I, I don't have anything from, from any of that. Anyway, uh, I think there's enough to be getting on with. I think, I think I'm going to be okay with that. Um, Darren suggests a country number, Dolly Parton style, Moderna Times. <laughs> that's very good. Um, anyway, I've got plenty to be getting on with. That's for darn sure. I've started to write a few lyrics. Um, and for patrons, uh, I will stream some of the making of uh, at some point later today, I've got it's going to be a kind of um, minor key uh, waltz thing. Um, it's going to be like a. That only hopefully a little more in tune. Lock it down, lock down the town. That's 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 the sort of refrain of the chorus of the anyway. Oh, God. Slightly excruciating, isn't it? Right. Um, this has been fun. Thanks for being here. Uh, I hope to uh, see you tomorrow. When, hopefully, all being well. Uh, a 4 a.m. finish, I think. I'll unveil the musical. Thank you for all your suggestions. Don't forget, uh, you can watch tomorrow at 10 a.m. on YouTube. You simply have to go to www.youtube.com slash not today pod. 
If you go there now and you subscribe, and then there's a little button with a bell on it, if you click on that, you'll get an annoying little thing popping up saying, Not Today Pod is live tomorrow. And then you don't have to remember. I hope I remember. See you tomorrow. This has been a Swanburst Media production.